So I'm here with Reggie D. Smith, a black entrepreneur who's opening a drug and alcohol rehab facility in his hometown of East St. Louis. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm excellent. Uh, you know, what was it like growing up in East St. Louis? You know, because it has a reputation for being a tough area. Yeah, it's a it's a tough area. Um, inner city. It's no different than any, any other inner city. It's a little smaller, but you know, it's it, it is what it is. You know, it's an impoverished community, a uh, community that needs a lot of help, uh, help that our people aren't getting that I'm that I'm planning to give them. Definitely. Uh, what put you on the path to open up an alcohol and drug rehabilitation center? Um, some of the things that I've been through myself, some of the things that I've done, contributed to, uh, and I've taken so much from our community, man, I it, still it's time for me to give back, you know, uh, my late teen years, early 20s, 30s, um, I, I took a lot, you know, I, I did a lot, I took a lot, you know, uh, sent me to prison a couple of times, and now that I am on the right path, I just feel that I need to give back a little bit. You So you actually were in prison at one point? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A couple of times. Yes. What did you go to prison for? Uh, murder, drugs. Yeah, those are the main things that got me uh, in state prison, uh, federal prison, uh, more white collar. Wow. Uh, how, what What do you say, like, would be the transformation of your life? How did you turn things around? Because, like, now I see, like, you know, all the great things you're doing. You have your own barbecue sauce, you know, your own coffee. Like, you know, yeah. uh, I wouldn't have expected that. Um, well, being in, on the inside, you know, you start talking to people. And if you have just a, a, a little bit of sense, you would tell yourself, this is not where I want to be. This is not where I want to die. This is not the life that I want. You know, I, I like eating steak and lobster. I like driving cars. You know, I like women. You know, uh, those things you're not getting in prison. You know, not legally anyway. You know, not on a consistent basis. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, those things, man, it's, it, 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 yeah, that's not what I want to do in my life. That's not where I want to be. Um, I have a child. I, I want to be out to, you know, uh, raise my child. Uh, I have grandkids now, so I definitely have to be out now. Um, but yeah, I, I want to be with my family, man. That, that's no life for anyone, man, stuck in a cage like that. Definitely. Uh, what would be your advice to like young people who are in, you know, similar situations, you know, maybe involved in illegal activity, like mm -hmm. how would you advise them? Like, you know, what would you tell them? Man, uh, a 30 second bad decision can definitely cost you about 30 years. You know, that's that's the best advice I can give, you know, and I tell, you know, these young guys all the time because I do a lot of uh, violence prevention with youth uh, and, and gun violence. I'm a part of a couple of uh, organizations and I tell them, you know, go, go stand in your bathroom for 24 hours. Just sit in that bathroom for 24 hours. Imagine doing that for 24 years. You know, it's it's it, it, if, if you're not mind strong, it'll, it'll, it'll take you out. I mean, you mentioned, you know, gun violence. I'm from a city that's been ravaged by gun violence, Chicago. So mm -hmm. uh, what do you feel like is the solution? You know, because there's like, you know, a lot of ideas like, you know, there needs to be stricter gun laws. Do you think like, you know, this problem can be solved and how? Well, um, my take on guns is will probably be totally different than a lot of people you know, people's takes on guns at this point in my life. I personally feel that all guns should be outlawed. If you're not law enforcement, there should be no guns on the streets, period. I, I agree. I agree with yeah, that. that. That's my personal take on, uh, on gun violence. But we have to get at our youth at an early age, man. And I think some of the, the, the biggest problem that we have, and a lot of people aren't looking at it, uh, I think drugs, drugs, are the that's the main root of everything man with your gang violence they're fighting for uh hoods or as they call them or or territories or turfs people uh carjacking you know their their minds aren't right man even with the marijuana that they have out there now these different strains you know it's not like it was in the hippie you know hippie days the 60s 70s you know where, where marijuana was grown from the ground and it was naturally brown or green you know this purple stuff and orange and that, that's not natural man they're putting so many chemicals in in, in in the marijuana now and now you got the fentanyl and and all the other drugs the majority of the people that are committing crimes it's rooted around drugs in some way shape 
a form or either they're on drugs trying to get money for drugs fighting over drugs i believe if we try to rid our community uh, of these substances man we can get to these youth um we can get their minds right allow their minds are cloudy right now man they're they're cloudy and they're screwed up one of the things i, I thought was really inspirational was the fact that uh, for the recovery and rehabilitation center that you're opening, you're not taking any loans. You don't have any partners. So you're, you're using your own money. Yeah. And, you know, there's been like, you know, some uh like hardships, I guess, like someone broke in right before uh closing and stole the electrical wiring and plumbing. Yes. Plumbing. Yes, man. I, it's, it's been it's been a battle. Uh, I, I kind of put my faith in God uh, on this one. I left my full-time job as an over-the-road truck driver to concentrate on getting the center open. Um, I needed major electrical work, uh, major plumbing work. Um, I have a leak in my roof. So I'm renovating the center right now, but I'm still providing treatment right now. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of outreach, a lot of telehealth, and I'm going into the communities doing what I do. Uh, speaking and 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 you know and dealing with the youth, dealing with young adults and and older adults as well if they reach out for help. But yeah, my, my center needs some work. Uh, February, March is when I would like to open. But right now, yeah, I'm funding a lot of this out of my pocket from the selling of my sauces, my potato chips, and my seasoning, and uh, money that I made as an over the road truck driver. Uh, have you finished your uh, drug and alcohol institution uh, certification? Like I, I have one, one class left and then I go for my state boards. So I'm thinking mm, January, I'll be ready. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah, I'll be a uh, full counselor then. That's awesome. Uh, like, you know, wh where can people follow you on social media, uh, you know, support you? Like, you know, uh, they wanted to donate to the, the center. Uh, PureLivingRecovery.org. There's a link at the bottom where you can donate. Uh, you can follow me on social media at uh, Pure Living Reco uh, Recovery and Rehabilitation or Pure Heat Gourmet Sauce on Facebook. Uh, Instagram is SauceBoss uh, underscore Pure Heat. Definitely. Uh, Reggie Smith, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Hey guys, wasn't that interview with Reggie D. Smith awesome? Isn't it really amazing? Like, you know, the power of God to be able to change, like, you know, people, uh, how he could take people from like, you know, uh, the worst type of backgrounds and transform their lives. I think like, you know, we've seen that time and time again, if there's nothing that like, you know, we can be certain of is the power of God and his ability to change. And he can do that for you. You know, so if you're like, you know, suffering from addiction, I would recommend that you find like, you know, uh, help, like, you know, look for like, you know, uh, you know, different resources in your area. If you don't live in the East St. Louis area, but you may live in another area, maybe like, you know, call 211. I'm sure there's somewhere like you, you can get help, but you just have to look for it. You know, I think it's really important. Some of the topics that we uh, we we talked about and like I would really encourage you guys to write your legislators you know, the lawmakers in this country and ask them to uh, make stricter gun laws. I think like, you know, we've seen like over the years, like, you know, where people have lost their lives, the gun violence. So I want to use this platform, uh, my opportunity, like, you know, to ask you guys to do something and a call to action. I think it's really important that we take action. Uh, so whether you guys write your 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 state representative, your your senators, your congressmen, you know, uh, a lot of times people don't even know who those people are. So I think it's really important. Uh, I appreciate you guys for checking out my channel. Make sure you subscribe and check out the rest of the interviews. Leave a like and a comment. And I appreciate you guys. I love you all. Also, guys, remember to be on the lookout for my book, Surviving the SAG After Strike. I talk about like, you know, my experience as an actor, you know, it's a biography uh, where I detail like, you know, my life growing up in Chicago, some of the things I experienced in the entertainment industry. I think it's a really important book. It goes all the way up to the SAG After Strike where I worked as a SAG strike captain. I think it's a really uh, great book. You know, I think everyone has a book nowadays, but uh, hopefully you guys like, you know, will support it and um, I'll post the link uh, when it's ready. It's being finished, like, you know, um, almost like so I'm hoping to have it out by like, you know, the beginning of next year and you guys continue to check out the interviews.
And I appreciate you guys, everybody who subscribes to the channel. Uh, if you haven't, uh, make sure you subscribe and, and check it out.